Hello there and welcome to Rock Paper Shotgun. Now if there's one thing I like more than chomping a gooey marshmallow, it's finding out what makes my favourite games tick. Okay, maybe I like those things evenly, I mean marshmallows are pretty great. That's what this new series is all about. I call it crafting materials and be using it to find out the stories behind great virtual worlds. And no virtual world dazzled me more in 2019 than Outer Wilds. Outer Wilds is an open world exploration game set in a solar system on the verge of destruction. You see, the sun is about to go supernova and take everything with it. And it's a destruction you get to witness again and again and again because you're trapped in a 22 minute time loop. That's 22 minutes to reanimate from the dead, hop back into your ship and find the secrets and learn lessons that may help you get further in the next 22 minutes. It's basically Interstellar meets Groundhog Day. But what really makes it so memorable is the nature of the solar system you're exploring. A selection of celestial bodies designed to show off the changing galaxy or just wow you with mad sci-fi visions. And they are fantastic. Let's take a quick look at them. So over here we have the Hourglass Twins, two binary planets that transfer sand from one to the other. As they do, it excavates the secrets on one planet while drowning the treasures of the other. Or there's Dark Bramble, a labyrinthine tangle of chambers policed by the dreaded anglerfish. Or perhaps you want to visit the visual powerhouse of Giant's Deep, using a dull gaseous outer layer to hide an astonishing world of tornadoes and islands that are ripped from the sea. But the planet that dazzled and puzzled me the most is Brittle Hollow. So what is Brittle Hollow? Well, at its core, well, at its core is nothing. As the name suggests, it's a hollow planet. Imagine a giant chocolate Easter egg in space. In the 22 minutes leading to the supernova, it's pounded with meteors, sending chunks of the surface tumbling into the black hole at the planet's core. Brittle Hollow was actually the first concept the game's creative director, Alex Beecham, had. He envisioned a planet slowly breaking up as it was pummeled with procedurally generated meteors. From that came the wider idea of a solar system where things changed over time, and with that, the necessity for a time loop to hit reset every 20 or so minutes. Just to zoom out a little bit, what a lot of people maybe don't realise about Outer Worlds is how much of it is governed by accurate physics. Take your early trip to Timberhearth's Observatory, where you find a model showing metal balls mystically moving by themselves. They're actually being affected by the pull of gravity from the smaller atoll rock orbiting the planet. This is one way the team rubbed that science in your face. It says, yes, Outer Worlds is governed by gravity. In fact, if you jump when the atoll rock is above you, you will go higher than if you jump without it. But what we see in Brittle Hollow is something much more complicated, but still governed by that same approach. This may be something you don't realise. Brittle Hollow isn't a scripted set piece, but is breaking up procedurally. It begins up here at Hollow's Lantern, which is the volcanic moon orbiting Brittle Hollow. A place you probably didn't visit more than once, given that, well, it turns you into this marshmallow. The moon rotates on a non-conventional axis that makes the volcano twist in different ways. It then fires at random intervals, and it's the combination of timing and movement that changes the trajectory of the meteors. From here, the flaming rocks are captured by Brittle Hollow's gravity and hit the surface. At this point, there's a random dice roll to calculate the damage it does to that particular segment of crust. Each piece of the surface has a hidden health value, and when that hits zero, that piece will fall. The combination of unpredictable meteor behaviour and random damage causes Brittle Hollow to collapse differently every single time. If you set a timer and travel to the same spot in four time loops, you'll directly see the variations in the way that the planet is collapsing. 
This approach raised a new challenge for Mobius, how to ensure the planet collapses in a uniform manner so you don't end up with, say, half a planet floating in space, but also that its collapse doesn't hinder its role in the wider story. To try and control destruction, the team created a heat map of meteor hit locations and manually tweaked damage probabilities and health values to achieve random feeling destruction. On top of this, a few pieces of the planet are directly cheated for the purposes of story or puzzle design. The ruins that hang under the surface can't fall until the surrounding surface fragments are gone, for example, giving you time to reach them and start pillaging their secrets. This is the magic at the heart of Outer Wilds, a game where fixed design does battle with unpredictable physics. Physics that can disrupt the breadcrumb trail Mobius laid across the solar system. As creative director Alex Beecham described it to RPS, design-wise that must be the big problem to solve, especially given that the world is open enough that you can land anywhere you want. Trying to figure out how to control the flow of information and the player's experience a little even though it's this chaotic system. Brittle Hollow is something you have to explore to progress in the story, but it's also destroying itself. This is why there are multiple points of entry around the planet's equator, and inside the planet many routes double up, so that even as pieces begin to fall, you have the means to reach your destination. And failing that, who amongst us hasn't relied on this handily placed gravity lift to make daring leaps across the core of the planet? Even the falling segments themselves are built in your favour. Each fragment is shaped and had its centre of gravity tweaked so that it would tumble into the black hole without clipping through other walkways, taking you with it. It's chaos, but it's polite chaos. It raises a larger question. Why leave any of this to chance? Why not cheat and bake in the destruction of Brittle Hollow to make it the perfect blockbuster every time? The team at Mobius say their way is more fun for starters, but also finding a pattern of destruction that's as natural feeling as what they get from procedural collapse is very difficult. They explain the struggle of designing the interloper, a comet in elliptical orbit around the sun, placing its path so that it wouldn't collide with planets, but would still pass by those planets in a way that we could stand and gawp at its passage, was a considerable challenge. One that dissuaded them from dictating the behaviour of all of Brittle Hollow's many more moving parts. Of course, this reminds us, for all the ingenuity of Brittle Hollow as a contained planet, it does have a role to play in the wider solar system that introduces a whole new set of challenges. What if you leave Brittle Hollow? Like most games, Outer Worlds reduces the complexity of the simulation when you aren't near, so not to drain performance. But in Outer Worlds, you can still have a presence on that planet. If you leave your ship behind, it has to react to physical collisions. If you place the scout probe, it's not just a physical object that has to be tracked, it has to beam back images of what's happening. The game is running multiple planets at the same time. That the game doesn't completely collapse in on itself is credited to graphics engineer Logan Verhoof for creating a simplified collision checking system that means the game knows how Brittle Hollow is being impacted even when you are not there. He's also responsible for the streaming system that allows you to hit a black hole or warp core and teleport the solar system without a loading screen. As Beecham tells us, a lot of this speaks to the value of jumping into and designing a project with absolutely no regard for what it will take to run. But that's also the magic of Outer Worlds, that randomness, the sense of a world reacting on the fly, gives it a spark of life that few games have. A life that is snuffed out in 22 minutes, sure, but during that time it's filled with wonder and makes you want to ask the big questions. What lies out there? Who came before us? Where the hell am I getting infinite marshmallows from? And most importantly, how the hell did they make this? Well, as we've heard, with great difficulty and considerable ingenuity. I hope you've enjoyed this first episode of Crafting Materials. I mean, really, it's just an excuse for me to eat marshmallows on the company dime. Those suckers. 
I'll be back in two weeks with the next episode and there's a little teaser for that one at the end. If you did enjoy this episode, please do take a look at all the other stuff we're doing on the channel. And if you like that stuff, maybe think about subscribing for more stuff like that. You've been watching Rock Paper Shotgun and I hope to see you again soon. So goodbye for now and keep an eye out for this next episode.